So I was looking through some of the comments and someone had asked a really good question about all these different battery chargers that we got that all say they have bad battery detection, damaged battery, whatever. Does it actually mean the battery is damaged or should be replaced? The short answer is no. None of these battery chargers have properly indicated to me that any of the batteries that I put in them were defective or damaged and should be replaced. Now for this video, I am talking entirely about nickel metal hydride, low self discharge batteries. Let's talk about what these chargers generally do when they're detecting a bad battery. During a battery's operation after it has been fully charged, it might have some voltage around 1.4 volts. And over time, measured in whatever, the voltage settles down to somewhere around 1.2 pretty quickly, early in its operation. It settles to around 1.2 volts and then pretty much stays at about 1.2 volts until it's depleted, until it's completely depleted. And then it will start to fall off. And most alkaline batteries and other non-rechargeable batteries have a termination voltage of somewhere around 0.9 volts. So most devices that you put the battery into will indicate, hey, low battery, or they'll stop operating somewhere between like 1.1 and 0.9 volts. So somewhere in that, re in that region. This is a non-linear scale, just so you know, because this is zero, <laughs> in case you were wondering. But the important bit is that if the device that you're using does not stop operating, or reduce its discharge current to the battery at around those voltages, the current being pulled from the battery goes up notably, and it'll keep pulling that battery voltage all the way down to zero volts. And this is the area that you don't really wanna to get to, this area here. If the battery cell enters into this 0 0.9 to zero volt area, then it's entering into this this level where if you were to take the battery out of the thing, say a set of LED Christmas lights is a perfect example of things that do not stop operating once they've reached the 0 0.9 volt threshold or anywhere at all between 0 0.9 and zero volts. And it will go all the way down to zero volts to where it's just not doing anything. The thing's completely dead. The microcontroller is not just barely operating. And you'll have, uh, typically what I'll find is in a set of Christmas lights that we're using. That one's smaller. So you have a set of three batteries going off to your Christmas lights. And what happens is in this pack, since these are wired together in series, so this is a basically a three series, one parallel set, and then you have your negative coming back from the common. At least one of the batteries is not gonna be charged at the same level as the other batteries. In the case this pack discharges, the lights start to get really dim, I'm lazy. I go, ah, I'll let it go a couple more days. It's getting dimmer and dimmer. Eventually I look at it and go, oh, the lights aren't even on anymore. They're not turning on at all. And then I know, ah, oh, crap, one of these cells is at zero volts. And sure enough, if I go and put the cell into the charger, if one of them goes all the way down, to zero volts, let's say it's this one. The rest will be somewhere in the vicinity of 0 0.8 volts maybe, this is probably 0 0.6 volts, but then one actually just drops to zero volts. Take the cells out, since we're talking about this EBL cell, I throw them in this EBL charger, and what this charger will do is, it'll power on, it'll show its little indicators to show where the battery level is and it'll show red, and then it'll try to charge, and then it'll either stop charging immediately and, and flash the LED red, saying it's a bad battery, or it will strangely charge the battery up super fast and then consider that the battery has been fully charged or show that it's done charging. And what's happening there is two different phenomena are happening. One is just it's not meeting its minimum threshold for what it will charge at. So a lot of these chargers, including the Ugreen one, and this smart USB EBL charger, not this one too, to a certain extent, and definitely the lacrosse technology, they all have some low threshold. In the case of a lacrosse technology, I know I've measured it, it's at 0.5 volts. 
The rest of these I've not measured, but they're, I think they're all within the vicinity of 0.5. And when you try to charge a cell back up, so now this is discharge and this is charge. So if the cell comes in and you're gonna apply some constant current to it, in the case of what's happening right now with these Analyte Pros, it's two, about 200 milliamps, you wanna know that you're not applying it to zero volts. Because if you're applying it to zero volts, there could be a chance that you have a short circuit and you would preferably not be shorting out the, the internal chemistry of the battery and causing a variety of potential unhappy things to happen. In the case of nickel metal hydride cells that typically just get really hot and can leak, vent their contents, they can explode, but it takes a lot, of, it, it takes a lot to, to do that relative to other battery chemistries. So if the cell comes in to the charger, and again, we're going over time, we wanna to get to a charge termination of somewhere around 1.5 volts, and the cell starts off at, this is our bad battery, we're gonna make it a red. It starts off at zero volts, and you put it in the charger. So the first thing the charger will do is it will measure the voltage across the cell. And if it measures the voltage at 0.0, .0 volts, it doesn't even turn on charging, and it just goes, battery's bad, and if you look at it over time, the battery voltage will not go above zero volts. It'll just sit there at zero. Does that mean the battery is bad? No, it doesn't. It means the battery's been fully discharged. It may have lost a slight bit of overall capacity because you don't really want to discharge a chemical thing all the way down to zero volts. So long as you charge it back up slowly, but not too slowly, but slowly, with a charger that will accept it, then the battery will recover and be in good shape, especially if it's a battery that's not that old. Like Antelopes that are less than 10 years old, these EBL batteries, a couple years old, maybe five years old, most batteries less than five years old are fine. The only exception is that the battery gets really hot or the battery has been used in extreme temperature conditions like this Goal Zero battery. I don't know who makes this one, but I've talked about it before, where it has been outside in the sun hitting 60 degrees Celsius or, or perhaps even hotter and it's degraded. The whole thing is degraded because of extreme temperature. So th with those exceptions in mind, you can generally go take the cell and simply re reverse charge the battery. I'll put the card right here. So you can take a battery that's been dead and flip it around. And I go into more detail in that video but you can basically push a charge back onto the battery for a few seconds, get that voltage back up above 0.5 volts, and then put it back in the charger again and allow it to charge. In that case, the charger will see the voltage at 0.5 volts. It'll test it and go, okay, 0.5 volts, clear to charge, apply the constant current to it, and then your voltage will start rising, usually pretty quick, and then it takes a much longer time for it to get up to 1.5 volts. Now some other chargers will attempt more intelligent things. And what they'll try to do is kind of similar to what happens in lithium ion charge controllers when a lithium ion battery is at zero volts. And it will apply a small amount of current. And we're gonna go up to, two, we'll just use 200 milliamp as our high point here. You can go way higher than that, but I'm just gonna go off of what the standard charge is on the lacrosse technology charger. And so it might look at the battery voltage that's at zero volts. Here's the similar battery that's coming in. So the charger applies a little bit of current to the cell. If the voltage starts to rise and goes above the 0.5 volt threshold, then this will come all the way up to its set charge current and it will start to charge the battery like this. Different chargers can do different things to try to nudge the voltage up a little bit to see that the battery's voltage is rising and then try to charge it. Now, some chargers that actually have this functionality will still show that the battery is quote unquote bad if it tries to nudge this up a little bit and the voltage doesn't rise. And that's because if a battery's been discharged sufficiently, it can go into a high impedance state and giving it a little bit of current, a little nudge of current at 1.5 volts is just not going to do it. It's not going to be enough to get the electron flow in the right direction and actually start a potential 
difference across the anode and cathode so you can see some voltage being registered when it goes to sense it. The charger also has to stop applying the current in order to measure the voltage because you can't measure voltage while you're applying current. So it'll apply this for a short period of time, stop, measure the, measure the voltage. But if the impedance again is still pretty high, then that voltage is gonna fall right back down again and it's gonna be too low. And the charger will go, nah, I tried once, twice, however many times. It's just not gonna, it's gonna say no, the battery is bad. Where does it leave us? It leaves us with taking matters into your own hands and <laughs> somehow applying a voltage to the battery that you know is still in good shape and nudging that voltage back up yourself. I want us to watch the video that I linked to. The second option is to look for some sort of fixed voltage, basically a variable power supply. Then you can apply a constant voltage, constant current charge to the cell for a short period of time. I'd recommend perhaps you set it at 1.5 volts DC, starting at 50 milliamps as your limit. And if that doesn't work, don't increase the current, increase the voltage a little bit. Keep increasing the voltage because you're trying to get the, because you don't want to induce a whole bunch of current into the cell. And I know what I'm saying may sound completely against what I, what I talked about in that jumpstart video, but I personally don't have a bench power supply. And so that I, this is not an option for me, but this is the better, this is the better way to, to get cells going again. And so this, you may want to slowly ramp that voltage up. I wouldn't go any higher than three volts. And as you apply the voltage to the cell, if you start to see current flowing and then it limit set somewhere around 50 milliamps, let it go for a few seconds. So this is one, and then you get current flow. Then maybe go 10 seconds and then put it back on the charger. The other option is do nothing. Let the cell sit. Take it out of whatever it was in and let it sit. Just open circuit. Don't put it in a charger. Don't put it in anything else. Just let it sit out, preferably in a cool environment. Don't put it in the freezer, don't put it in the refrigerator, nothing like that. Just let it sit with nothing connected to it for about maybe three to five days. And then after that, give it a shot trying to charge it. With the charger that you have that has the lowest charging current. If you only have one charge, like you picked up this Ugreen charger, then just put it in there and see what happens. If it starts blinking the light fast again, then I would say maybe give it a couple more days if you want to. If not, try one, one of the first two options. But letting it sit, sometimes you have the voltage sitting at 0, 0.0 volts DC because it's been, being, it's been pulled down to zero sitting in that whatever configuration it's been in, like this. And when you take it out of the device that it was in, it's gonna stay at zero volts. But if you let it sit, then everything kind of starts to move around kind of on its own. So I would just recommend giving it time to sit and then putting it right back in the charger. When you do get the voltage back up to 0 0.5 volts or thereabouts and a charger accepts it and begins to charge it, pick a charger that has active temperature monitoring on it. Every one of these chargers has active temperature monitoring on it. The LaCrosse Technologies, the Ugreen charger, which I tore apart, this EBL one, which I haven't torn apart, but it's coming in a future video, and this e EBL one. Normal conditions, when a nickel metal hydride cell gets toward its end of charge, it's no longer accepting any more charge chemically, and instead it releases that as heat. And so many of these chargers have the negative delta V DT, which I talk about in some, I think it was my first, very first video. Maybe I'll do another video on this. It's a lengthier discussion. But if they don't detect that fall that fallback in voltage, where the voltage rises, sorry, this is time, this is voltage. They don't detect that fallback in voltage where the cell isn't accepting any more charge. Its voltage falls back. Then it knows it's time to terminate charge. But sometimes it's hard for the charger to detect that because a variety of different conditions. So a secondary measure for a lot of these chargers is temperature, generally. It's 60 degrees Celsius. And then the third thing is time. I think all of these actually have that. So first, second, third. So you need a charger that has all these three things in it if you're gonna be playing around with trying to restore cells that have just been over discharged 
and you want to continue using them and they probably have plenty of capacity left in them and don't need to be recycled. So that's it. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.